when fuel prices are high, we're all desperate to use less of the stuff. Which is why there's been a recent explosion in miracle gadgets like these. Every single one of these promises to make your car use less fuel. And as most of them cost less than a full tank, that sounds too good to be true. Which is why my mission today is to find out if these are miracles or just fables. To test them accurately, I've come to the University of Hertfordshire's Automotive Engineering Department. Their £40,000 rolling road will ensure that the test conditions are the same for each device. It will actually drive the car itself, making sure the exact same speed and throttle inputs are achieved for each and every gadget. It basically takes the human error right out of the equation. Using a specialist ECU worth around five grand and £1,500 worth of dedicated fuel monitoring software, engineer Gareth will be able to tell me exactly how much petrol the car consumes. This is the most accurate way that you can... I would, I would say, yeah. Gareth has already measured that this Vauxhall Insignia does 49 miles per gallon over a 20-minute run at varying speeds. Now we'll test each gadget in the same way and see if they work. This is the EMAG. Now, essentially, it's a powerful magnet that clamps around the fuel line. Now, its makers claim that it can reduce fuel consumption by up to 15%, and it can reduce carbon emissions and increase performance by conditioning the fuel before it enters the engine. All right, let's do it. The magnet apparently breaks down the fuel molecules to achieve a more efficient mix of fuel and oxygen. There's not a lot for me to do in here. I can't touch the steering wheel. I think I need to read a book. After an identical 20-minute drive, the results are in. We have managed 47.72. You're an engineer, so I'll let you decide. That is less than that. It is. The EMAG did nothing in this test. In its defence, the makers claim you need to cover 2,000 miles before any benefit is felt. This is the Viab Tour. And what you do is you plug it straight into the cigarette lighter or the 12-volt electrical socket in your car. And by doing that, apparently, this £40 device will save you up to 10% in fuel. It supposedly stabilises the car's electrical system to give you better economy. We've just spent 20 minutes with this in the cigarette lighter. And what has it done, Gareth? Absolutely nothing. 47.64 mpg. So the Viab Tor is, from what we've seen today in our experiment, not very useful. The claim of a 10% saving is worth 150 quid a year on fuel. But the Viab Tor did nothing for the insignia. There's only one place for it. On to gadget number three, then. This is the EMU which stands for Electronic Matching Unit. It costs £150 and it claims to save you at least 10% of fuel, up to 25%. Why are world leaders not aware of this? 20 minutes later and the results are in. Well, um, it has done a staggering 47.46 mpg. Spot the theme? That's less than the original 49 mpg. This £150 metal box claims to increase the explosive force in your cylinders, but it did nothing for us. Next up is the £50 MagnaFlow. It claims its magnetic field conditions the fuel before entering the engine, helping it burn more efficiently and saving up to 23%. isn't a million miles away from our baseline. Magnaflow say that dirty oil and air filters can inhibit performance, but the majority of customers notice an immediate improvement. We didn't. Finally, I'm testing this, the Broquette fuel-saving device. Originally invented in World War II for use on fighter planes, it fits in the fuel line and it reacts inside with pellet-based catalysts. The idea behind this is that it improves the combustion efficiency of the fuel, thus saving you between 7 and 10%. To fit the briquette, you first need to cut and attach it to the fuel line. With four gadgets already in the bin, could this be the one that saves the reputation of fuel-saving devices? The answer was no. Break me the news. 
0.36. In our test, the 180 pound briquette did not save between 7 and 10%, as it claimed. They all did below the initial baseline. None of the gadgets in this carefully controlled test saved the fuel that they claimed. So we asked the university's Dr. Rashid Ali, an expert in electronics, to examine the internals of some of the gadgets. First, he dissected the 150 pound emu. I have not seen anything more shabbier than this in terms of an electronic product that has been commercially sold. It is a diabolical piece of engineering. The quality of the soldering is quite miserable, quite pathetic. Most electronic printer circuit boards should be electrochemically cleaned so that you don't have, um, shall we say, conductivity between pads and components. And of course, the classic is how an LED should not be connected, not by hot glue. Dr. Ali was equally curious about the 40-pound Viabtor. It is just a green light. Unbelievable. I mean, that's that's all just... there is to it. How can, you, how can you live with yourself selling someone that? On the basis of these findings, we cannot recommend any fuel-saving gadget at all. 